Coach, thanks very much. Spread between 4th and 6th Streets in downtown Minneapolis, we welcome you inside spacious U.S. Bank Stadium. It can certainly get loud inside this building. And just a few moments ago when the Vikings were introduced, it was downright shaking in here. They're set for football as the Vikings get ready to do battle with the Los Angeles Rams. On first and 10, golf. Open man is Higby, the tight end. Four yards the result on the first play from scrimmage. Second down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Here's the first carry now for Todd Gurley. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. This will be a two-yard loss on the play, and that'll make it third down. Run coverage excellent there from the defensive end position. How many times do we sit with coaches and they talk about a base defensive end, a guy who can anchor and play with leverage? We just saw a great example of it. And how about the bonus, tackling the runner for a loss? Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. So on fourth down, here's Johnny Hecker to punt it away. Back deep is a very dangerous Mike Hughes. And he gets this away. And look at this. This is a good one. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. Now the Minnesota Vikings coming back out as they get the football here. Now it's been over four decades since the Vikings played in the Super Bowl, and you don't know if this is going to be the year that they get back, but there has not been a lot of talk about this Minnesota team. Double-digit win season and a lot of good teams in this conference, and I feel like they're a little bit under the radar, but top ten in both offense and defense you got dynamic players on both sides of the football and we'll see what this minnesota vikings team can do down the stretch if they can make a little noise one thing's for sure they've been very good at home this season second and nine now from the 21. hey watch number 33 watch number 33 trip working out of the gun cousins and this one hold in by rudolph well, they'll get nine there as that sets them up better for third down. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. The last catch nearly got him a first, but it did not, and they'll try to convert on third and inches. They'll run it. Here's Cook. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. Two yards and able to get the first down in the process. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. He's got it complete to Stephon Diggs. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk at a 45. They get 14 there. First down, Vikings. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. Cousins on target to Diggs, and he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. I like that one, partner. They go back-to-back -back with excellent gains. And really, it shouldn't be a surprise who they were throwing the ball to. He's their best guy. Yeah, we knew that they would get him involved early. They're doubling down on getting him involved early. Don't be surprised if they'll come right back to him again. They haven't shown the propensity to be able to stop him. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. I'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one. Forced the incompletion. 
That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Freeze up your guys elsewhere. On second down, Cook. They'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. All right, Brand, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Cousins now. Setting up the screen for Cook. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Delvin Cook, 30 yards. As his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. Well, you've got to like that start on both sides of the football. You force the three and out, and then you score on your first drive. Well, I know someone who doesn't like that start. Well, yeah, the other side. Yeah, they don't like that <laughs> at all, right? This is not the way it's supposed to be. But what you just described, that's team football. All right, when you get a three and out, you're supposed to take advantage of it on the offensive side of the ball. You said, thank you very much for getting us to rock. Let's put it in the end zone, and they did exactly that. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Rams coming back out here offensively. We talked earlier about Jared Goff and how his numbers are down this year. Remember, though, to consider that he's had some injuries at wide receiver. That's made it tougher for Goff to throw the football. And also, Todd Gurley, he hasn't had the same year running the football, and that has made things harder as people have keyed in on Goff in that passing attack. So the Rams just not the year that they were hoping to have, likely on the outside looking in for the playoffs. It's another example of how hard it is to get back to the Super Bowl the second straight season. These Rams not even looking like they're going to make it to the playoffs for a second consecutive season. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. From the gun, here's Goff. And the open receiver, it's Robert Woods. A gain of six there on first. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Goff going to hand it to Gurley. And he'll only get a yard, maybe two, up to the 46. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? An extra defender in the secondary for the Vikings here on third down. They go play action with Gurley. Now gone. And that will be incomplete. I think the punter might start to get into a pretty good rhythm here if he keeps getting opportunities. But that's the last thing his team wants to have happen, right? The last thing you want to see is your punter feeling pretty good because he's out there all the time. Yeah, first quarter only, but they're 0 for 2 on third down conversions to start this thing. He gets us away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. That'll be out of bounds, and how good was that? They'll say the three-yard line. That's where they spot it. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. And from that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. Check, 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 check. They start the drive with Cook. Well, that gives them a little room, but not much. A gain of two to the five. That first down play, all you want to do is wedge out any type of space and try and create enough room. If you have to run the punter out there, 
he can successfully complete the punt. Yeah, he didn't get a ton there, but at least some positive yardage. And they're going to go with the jet sweep. This is Diggs with it. And that won't buy him much room. Just a one-yard gain to the five. Well, let's go ahead and detail this situation here. Third and long coming up. Back near your own goal line. I would be very hesitant about throwing the football in this situation. Maybe just run, run up the middle. Yeah, I think that that might be the spot for them. you got to try and find some space for your punter because you don't want him backed up where he has to alter what he does. Cousins. And he's able to find Diggs. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. Give him 18 there and give the Vikings a first down. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. A gain of three, second down. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean or else he'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. On second and seven, Cousins. It's complete to Diggs. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. 13 yards as the Vikings pick up the first down. One of the selling points of the in route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. Cousins now already over 100 yards passing in this first quarter. It's first and 10. A throw over the middle taken in. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Back to the ground, Cook. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral, also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other backs in the league. So from Rams territory now, it's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. On the carry, it's Cook. Cook stripped, the ball's out. And now the Rams have got it, going the other way. And he'll return this ball across midfield to the 47-yard line. On first down, it's Gurley. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. First down, Los Angeles there with a pickup of 14 yards. Although his reputation as a speedy runner precedes him, it's always fun to watch him work. It is eye-opening, isn't it? Because when you see him get the ball and just go, in addition to that speed, it helps out his blockers. They don't have to hold blocks for long because he's just going to speed right past them. A run with Gurley there on first down, going to get about four yards. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. Third and two, golf. This is caught, it's Cooks. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 12-yard line. First down, Los Angeles. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Hey, 
This will be the first red zone opportunity now for the Rams. It's first and 10 from the 12. A shotgun snap for gone. And that going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just My better man. defense. I think you're right. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Goff now to throw. Open man, Higby, the tight end. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. That catch good for five. It's third down. It is hard in zone coverage to stop a curl route because when they see it, they just try and find the open spot and sit down. Yeah, we always talk about finding the soft spot in the zone. What's the key to doing that? How do you do it? You have to read what the coverage is. Is it too deep? Is it three deep? Because then you know where the linebackers are going to drop, what spots on the field they naturally get to, and you find that open space, and then you're in sync with your quarterback. He should be reading the exact same thing, and they put the ball right on you. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, Tight ends know that they become a big Break part up. of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hop route, so to speak. They'll try and push it in with Gurley. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. Todd Gurley standing by his lonesome in the backfield here, second and goal. On the jet sweep, they get this to Cooks, and that would cover beautifully. Their defenders stayed home, and they'll stop him behind the line. A lot can go wrong when you call a play like this down in the red zone, but that's where you appreciate this from your head coach. He's not afraid to trust his guys to do the right thing, and as a player, that means an awful lot. They've been stuck twice here for losses. Now it's third and goal. Now gone. And it's complete. He's got it in the end zone. Touchdown Rams. Robert Woods there to make the grab as they are now on the board here in the first half. And no matter how it comes about, when you get good field position, you have to make the defense pay. Short fields usually make for good offense. Zerline good with a PAT, and we are tied at seven. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And they had the fumble last time that led to a touchdown. That's a no-no. We'll see what they do here this go-around. <laughs> a big no-no. Put that in capital letters. Turning it over, the other team takes it down and scores. That can be a deflator for a football team. Now it's up to the offense to get back out on the field and pick things up. Now they're out there. We'll see if they can pick those things back up. And they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Here's Cousins. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. It's a gain of 16, and the Vikings have the first down as well. 
We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there, getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. And as we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. But the converse is, though, you've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. On second and 11 now, Cousins. He gets this one into the hands of Dalvin Cook. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. It's a four-yard pickup, and that's going to bring up a third down. The Vikings on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This is third and seven. From the gun, here's Cousins. And this is Cook with the grab. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. That was well defended, and while it was a completion, it resulted in a loss of yardage. It's really, really hard for a running back to think to himself, I probably should have just dropped it and saved the yardage. It goes against the entire training that he's had his whole career. And he didn't quite have the backspin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. They'll try and start the drive with Gurley. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. And no more. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. The defensive line made pretty easy work of the offensive line that time. And people get tired of the cliche that the battle is won in the trenches. But it's a cliche because it's true. And how about the battle right there? One on the edge. And the ball carrier did not benefit. Now a man open down the middle of the field. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. First down, Los Angeles there with a pickup of 14 yards. Goff now 8 of 11 in this first half. He's got it first and 10. Just beating the play clock is Goff. He gets it to Cooks. A gain of six there on first. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Here's Goff. Gets this into the hands of the tight end, Higby. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. The offense on third down today, they've converted three out of five thus far. They're looking at third and a few inches. Again, golf. And that is incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It's way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. Here's Johnny Hacker now, as he's on to punt for L.A. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And now out comes Minnesota. And they'll be looking to avoid what happened last time, which is punting the football. But when you look at how teams play the game, that complimentary football comes into play. 
how do I take care of my defense? How do I take care of my offense? Well, the defense is taking care of them in a lot of ways. Now it's time for the offense to jump things up and help their defense out, give them a little bit of rest. Yeah, time, time for them to give them a rest. Took the words right out of my mouth. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest gain, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. We'll come up second and six now from the 24. Now Cousins. And Diggs has it. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 13 yards as the Vikings pick up the first down. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. They try to run on first down, but this defense says no dice. They stop him a couple yards behind the line of scrimmage. Call it a loss of two on the play, and that'll make it second and 12. Working out of the gun, Cousins. That'll be complete to Cook. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 13 yards as the Vikings pick up the first down. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and 10. Now Cousins here on the bootleg. And the pressure will get to him. He goes down. Now there is a flag on the play, but this looks like holding on the offense. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. Off the play fake, Cousins under pressure again, and down he goes again. Samson Abuka. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Cousins gives way to Cook. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. Here's Britton Colquitt now as he'll punt it away for the second time. Fifty-one yards on the punt there. And the Rams will go on offense here with a first and ten. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach. Can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Meanwhile, Goff to Gurley as he drops it off for his running back. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yarded. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Well, absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. To throw again on second down. Golf. He'll get this complete to Cooper Cup. 
They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. We didn't need to ask around the league, but we got to confirm this guy's a good player. They've got to find a way to get him more involved, call a few more plays that target him. Absolutely, because here we are toward the end of the first half, and that's the first target, not just the first catch, first target. Goff on third down. And that will be incomplete with a clock showing 18 seconds now to go. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards, well struck. And control of the football, switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. Time here for likely one play, and then these two teams will head to the locker room all even. And you know the play caller's just feeling it right now. Let's go ahead and go for this one. A big shot down. No, no, no. Guaranteed the head coach is like, don't get crazy. Take the knee. Let's get out of here. Tie game. We'll just start all over. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. After the incompletion, here's second and ten from the 20. All that remains is to snap this once, and that'll do it for the first half of play. And now they'll take a timeout defensively. After the second down play, they burn the timeout, making him sweat out the final few ticks here in the second quarter. The final second ticks by, and that's going to do it for the first half of play. So a touchdown apiece. That's what we have to show at halftime as they head to the locker room. 7-7, seven, seven, our score. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report. Coach this fielded at the two. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Now come the Vikings, they'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that'll give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. Cousins the thrower. And this one hold in by Rudolph. 10 yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Still a few inches short of a first down as they come up now on second down. Now we've got movement up front, and I think this is going to be on Minnesota. So not quite a first down just yet as they come up on second and less than a yard. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. And Rudolph has it, the tight end. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 12 yards there, first down Vikings. Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot and letting him go to work. And that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Play action now. Cousins looking for Johnson, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Mikel Roby Coleman. Johnson was the intended receiver from the 32 now. Here's first and 10. Time to establish the run game here. Gurley. And he gets stopped up at the 31 after a gain of maybe a yard. 
tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. Again, they run with Gurley. And it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. They lost two there, and it's third down. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. The chance of wasting this great starting field position, a real threat. This is third and long. From the gun, here's Goff. And that one's complete to Gurley. And he'll be brought down at the 28, and that is well short of the first. So on fourth down, here comes Greg Zerline to try and get three for the Rams. Spotted at the left hash, this from 45. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. We've been in enough practices, and how many times have we stood on the sidelines and a unit goes out to kick a field goal and hear a special teams coach say, make sure you protect. He's got daylight past the 20. Touchdown, Vikings! Oh, B.C. Johnson, 62 yards, and the Vikings have taken the lead. And nothing too crazy there, a quick slant, and then he just had a seam. He found a seam. And when you hit it on the run like that, and I mean the pass right to the receiver who's already in motion and moving, sometimes he just takes and runs away from everyone else. And he ran it into the end zone, and the defense, they've got to adjust there quickly. That's tough on them. That's really tough because everything was executed well. Ball was out of his hands quickly, into the hands of the receiver, and then he was gone. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. This fielded at the two. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Now the Rams offense, they work their way back on the field. They trail a one-score deficit, 14-7, as they come up first and 10. Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at their own 24. They'll start out on the ground with Gurley. And this has been a recurring theme tonight for sure. Nowhere to run. Back to the line of scrimmage, that's all. You know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now, is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play, because that's been an issue for them in this game. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figured out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secure before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Uh, we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. 
So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. Now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field. And last time, the formula was pretty simple. One play drive, long pass. That Maybe they just want to do that again, right? And that's exactly how you want to draw things up, whether it's on your grease board, right, in your playbook. One play drives exactly what you want on offense. What they have to be careful of is not having a letdown. It was fairly easy last time. They can't expect that going forward. And we'll see if it's that easy here. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Defensively, though, they had a chance there to hit him for a loss. Couldn't get it done. Looked like someone was able to knife into the backfield, but he wasn't able to get him down. But his compatriots, they were able to grab him at the line of scrimmage and not let him get any further downfield. And he's going to lose yardage here. Back to his own 18. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way. Lost yardage. No, for some reason, it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you can move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized, executed well, and you caused a lost yardage play. That's going to feel good and look great in film. A loss of a yard, and it brings up four. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. Colquitt on to kick as he sends it away. Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And that will come the offense as they take over. The Rams offense now making their way out to take over. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Now that was well defended, and as a cornerback, what you're taught when you see a wide receiver screen, either you get underneath the play before the blocking forms, or you're going to have to fight your way through it by getting through some blocking. That was a really nice play there. On second and 12, Goff. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Harrison Smith on the safety blitz, able to get the sack. Well, it was second long, now it's third and even longer. They're going in the wrong direction here because they're moving them exactly the way they want to, but you're exactly right. Definitely going in the wrong direction for the offensive guys. So Goff, he'll try to refocus after the sack. The Rams now set up with a tough one, a third and long. Here's Goff, and they'll set up the screen to Gurley. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. It'll be a pickup of 16, but they'll remain short of the marker, and it's fourth down. They dialed up the screen pass on third down, and for a second, it looked like it was all going to come together, and they had a chance to pick up a first down, but the defense got there and finished it off. Here's Johnny Hacker now, as he'll come on to kick for a sixth time tonight. Vikings now heading on to the field. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. Cousins on first down. And complete right side to Cook. And he's going to lose yardage here. Back to his own 18. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. At the 18-yard line. Second and 12 after the first down pass play went backwards for two yards. Now Cook. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain there, and now they're looking at a third and 13. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker, and what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, 
He looked like one of those guys. Third and long for Cousins. Let's it fly for Thielen. And the throw there going to be incomplete. It's always a goal, and it's really nice defensively when you can rally to the football and make sure there's enough contact to force an incompletion. Force an incompletion and force another punt. Here's Britton Colquitt now, standing just outside his own goal line. Take it in at the 22. And when it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. So now here are the Rams as their offense comes back out. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Another carry now for Gurley. They'll only get a couple up to about the 30. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right. He's pretty much been completely neutralized. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Now gone. Man, open. It's cup. He's got it. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. Give him 19 there as the drive marches forward. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. They run on first down as they're able to get this forward for about four. He was brought down by Eric Wilson. No, that wasn't an explosive run. That wasn't one that took it all the way to the house. But, boy, for a team that's had trouble running it the entire game, that's the kind of run they need, hopefully, to get themselves kick-started. To throw on second and six, golf. And that's going to be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. We've seen good cover skills on display throughout this game, really from both teams. And there's another nice example there of them making it difficult to complete a pass. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Out of the gun, gone. Open man is Higby, the tight end. And he's going to be taken down here, still a couple yards short of the first. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. And now out comes Minnesota. And they've got the lead here getting late into the third quarter. And the passing game for them, it's been terrific. We've seen that. But the rushing game, almost non-existent. And with the lead and trying to finish this game off, they need the running game to come back to life. They need to get spun that way, take some time off the clock, and keep the ball away from their opponents. They will get four yards here on the first down run. And that'll make it second and six. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Here we go. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. And that'll do it for the end of the second quarter. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports.
to throw on second and six. Cousins lets it fly for Thielen. And it's knocked away and incomplete. He was looking for Adam Thielen there. And it's third down. I know the initial focus was on how far that pass was downfield, but how about the coverage on the play? Able to stay with him, get his hands where the receiver's hands were going to try and catch the ball, tips it up in the air, and knocks it away. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Throwing his cousins, and that is incomplete. Critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. So a change of possession here on the punt. And possession will switch hands first and ten. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. He was in search of his tight end, Tyler Higby. That'll bring up second down. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. Now this throw caught left side. And he is out of bounds right around the 34. A gain there of 12 yards and a first down L.A. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. A shotgun snap for gone. Well, that'll be caught by Cup. A gain of six there on first. Your trip is here, baby. Your trip is here. Four receivers now, three to the right, one to the left. Second down and four. To the air again, gone. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Throwing again is gone. He gets it to Gurley, complete. It goes as a gain of nine and it moves the chains. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. From the 50, it's gone. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Again, golf. And that's complete to Cooks. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. A good pickup, 17 yards, and also a Rams first down. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. Goff on first down. And Woods has it complete. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. 22 yards on the catch and run, a first down. Cut, 20. 
Goff turns and gives to Gurley. And he'll fight his way down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Two yards on the carry there, and it'll be second down. But well, you know that old expression, it's not my night? It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Here's Gurley. And he stopped immediately there. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. And his carries tonight, they're getting up there. So maybe one of those every now and then is understandable. I would agree with that. Understandable every now and then. Sometimes you come back and you fake it to him and go play action. But other times you say, okay, they got him on that one. We'll come back to him in another carry. Throwing on third. Golf to the goal line, but it's incomplete. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. He had his lone attempt blocked earlier. And Zerline's kick is good. And they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. So an interesting call there to take the three. I mean, I guess they're thinking that their hands were tied, but, you know, fourth quarter, that field goal might not help them that much in the end. Yeah, eventually they're going to need the touchdown. The thinking must have been they didn't feel confident about picking it up there, hoping maybe on defense they can get better field position, get a turnover, get a better play, and then they'll have a chance to attack the end zone. For the main field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is, do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. Corey Littleton there on the tackle. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. Strip that ball. On play action, Cousins. And he almost had it defensively. Could have been a game changer there in the second half. Instead, it's third down. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got a lead. You've got to protect it. And he's taking chances, putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? On third down, Cousins. And he's able to find Diggs. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That'll put him at 96 yards receiving now for the game, and he's got a first down as well. They run with Cook. He's been busy tonight. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. And the trend continues here in the fourth like it was in the first, second, and third. He's had nowhere to run. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why do they keep feeding him the football? Well, they trust him first and foremost. They do believe that over time he might actually pop one of these runs. But the bottom line is he takes care of the ball well for them, so they'll keep handing it to him. And this one also slow and developing as he's maybe getting back here to the line of scrimmage, but not much more than that.
The Vikings on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, four for 10. This is going to be third and 13. From the gun, here's Cousins. And he's got Kyle Rudolph. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Rams' 29-yard line. Couldn't just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball on third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively a backbreaker. So from Rams territory now, it's first and 10 as they're down to the 29-yard line. A nice burst there as they'll get about seven that time on the first down run. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. Maybe flashback to high school or college <laughs> carrying it around campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting and clap? Oh, no, he lost the football. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. Running the jet sweep, this is Thielen with it. And a minuscule gain of maybe a yard from the six to the five. You got to be ready for anything when you play defense against this head coach. That is not something you'd expect to see here in the red zone, but it winds up getting him a few yards. And the ball smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. To throw, Cousins. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. It's a five-receiver set, three to the left, two to the right. This has been a long drive. you got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third? And yeah, he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. A five-yard touchdown. And yeah, the Vikings are going to widen that advantage. No lead safe in the new NFL, but this score is really going to give them some needed breathing room. Extra point try by Bailey. It's good, and it's Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. This is fielded at the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Rams offense now. They get set and head back onto the field. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal the way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. Now a quick slant as the throw's complete. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Decent start to the drive there. Of course, they need the touchdown, two-point conversion, and a field goal. Yeah, those guys are into it. How about the guys on the sidelines? You see the coaches signaling, all the personnel groups up on the sideline, ready to go in and out of the game. They've got to condense their time now in order to try and get back into it. On the draw, Goff gives to Gurley. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. 
Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back. Those are the ones you focus on and want to take away, and they've done that pretty successfully in this game. First down, L.A. Golf finding Higby. But correct me if I'm wrong, you know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. On first down, it's gone. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. Robert Woods, the intended receiver that time. But it'll be second down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. Gone. He's going to dump it off to Gurley. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. They call that a loss of six yards. And it's third down now. Well, where do you find that one in the playbook, Charles? You don't. You absolutely don't. And sometimes what happens is guys want to make a big play, and they turn it into a really bad one. Sometimes you're best just to cut your losses and go down. I hope we don't see another play like that. I'll guarantee you the offensive coordinator He's going to get his play sheet. He can't find it either. Yeah, big loss there on the pass completion. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all. And now they're looking at third down here. Goff throwing again. And that one's complete to Gurley. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. They get 15, but they still needed a little bit more. Fourth down. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they stop it prior to what will be an important fourth down. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They go ahead and snap it. Gone. This is caught. It's Cooks. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. One crisis averted, but they still need to move hastily. Now Goff on first down. And he'll find his target, Woods, it's complete. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. A gain of eight there on the eighth play of the drive. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before you get a good head of steam going. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. He was looking for Todd Gurley, and it's third and short. The touch and time are critical for those types of throws. He put a lot of zip on that one. Needed just a little bit more finesse trying to get it to his back. Play number nine set to come here on the drive on third and two. Back to throw, gone. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. Zerline's kick is up and through. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So a good kick that time, and that might help to get the negative thoughts out of the mind from that earlier block. Especially since this was not a chippy, so he had to get that one out kind of low. But his line does a nice job of protecting, and he's able to convert for three.
So with just under 40 seconds to go, you figure this is going to need to bounce their way if they have any shot. And the Vikings hands team able to recover, and that should just about do it. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% <laughs> of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. And now out comes Minnesota. Victory formation time for the Vikings as they'll take a knee here. The Rams going to be forced to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 35 seconds left to go. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. Cousins just going to take this one down to a knee and end it. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? <laughs> and the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. But Charles, a one-score game. Down to the end we went. They had one final play in that one-score game. We all knew what was coming to Hail Mary. They just couldn't get it done. What exactly complicated was it? We all knew, as you said, and go long to see if we could find someone open. They didn't get it done. Someone's happy. Someone is not. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. It's a win for the Vikings as we say so long from Minneapolis.